there is a word from the Lord hallelujah go with me to Ephesians 3 the King James says it like this beginning at verse 20 verses 20 and 21 Ephesians 3 now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end amen, amen. and amen NIV says to him who is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine I, I want you to chew on uh, this for me uh, empowered in him through him for him uh, what, what did she say in him through him for him empowered in him through him and for him let us pray Father, I decrease. And I pour out all that I am to be used for your glory. Work in me. Be edified and magnified in this place. God, I'm asking that you empower all of us. But I'm asking you this morning, God, for a special anointing upon the women in here and those who are watching online. Father, every now and then we need encouragement. Be that to us this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, girl. Do you know who you are? Do you know what you have achieved? The things that you take lightly? Any, uh, every other day that's filled with stress and you miss the fact that you overcame everything the enemy threw at you? Hey girl, look at you polished, put together, and no one is aware what it took for you to get here. Hey girl, I, I, I know it's only been 104 years since you've been registered or, or had the ability to vote, but look at you starting podcasts, having political debates, senators, congresswomen, vice presidents. Hey girl, Look at you, doctor, esquire, CEO, owner, operator, executive, mother, caretaker. Hey girl, is that you? Are you holding down the house, taking care of the children and still making his head turn? Hey girl. Is that you? You are her. You are fierce. You are it. That chick, boss lady, wonder woman, incredible you. Hey girl, I see you. Oh, but I also see that sometimes you are physically, emotionally, and spiritually drained. I, I, I see you. I see that you're always on top of things, troubleshooting, and always working things out. And yet, sometimes you are misunderstood. Hey, girl. Um, perhaps it's because since you were a little girl, they told you to be seen and not heard. To wear this dress, but don't play on the monkey bars like the boys. Be quiet and sophisticated. Don't be too passionate because they'll say that you're wild or something that is wrong with you. Ooh, come on now, let's talk about it. It's only been a few hundred years since they diagnosed women with hysteria. Hmm. 
if you were outside of the societal norms and expressed too much energy and too much emotion, dare I say too much passion, then they would say that it was hysteria. And in case you didn't know, hysteria means womb. In other words, if you had too much to you, they would say it was a womb problem. Because girls are taught to be women who are poised, happy, easygoing, soft, and pleasant, and would dare not wear jeans and sneakers to preach in. But, but the boys can be risk takers. They can be aggressive and ambition. You don't believe me? L let's, let's imagine, if you will, a sports game where all the fellas are yelling and they're outside with no shirt on in negative degree weather, cheering on their sports team. And we say, oh, that's cool, boys will be boys. Take that same scenario and drop down in the middle of a Beyonce concert where the girls got on them thigh high silver boots y'all know what I'm talking about all dressed up mm -mm, you can't do that they can make man caves and buy $200 jerseys but you can't go all out because you're supposed to be a certain way and carry yourself a certain way but I got news for you it's a new day and a new time and the people of God have been released the Bible says that God will fall on the the daughters and the sons that means that he is there for everybody there's a study that was done on computer science graduates and uh, when they ran the graduate students ran into an issue they would go to the professor and the boys would say something is wrong with my code but the women would say something is wrong with me Ah, something is, is wrong with that altogether. Hey girl, nothing is wrong with you. Somebody has just been tampering with your identity. Let's talk about it. 52% of the world is made up of women. That makes you the majority. And in the black church, the majority of the congregants are what? In fact, statistically, the majority of the givers are Ooh. Now, 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 brothers, we love you and we celebrate you, but we did say we were taking this moment this weekend for the women. Why is it then that if the majority of the world are, are women, how is it that all of the power brokers are men? Now, men are generally stronger than women. That's great. We love that for y'all. Thank you for pulling out my chair. I, pre I appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate that. In, in fact, I'm, I'm going to step out a little bit and say, uh, the only real equality I want is respect and salary. Come on. Okay. Uh, I, I don't mind. I don't mind being taken care of. Thank you, Craig. I don't mind it at all. Uh, um, but the power positions today are not about physical strength. It's about intuitive leadership, effective communication, creative growth, and logistic ingenuity. Ah, uh, and after you finish talking, you got to do something. You got to work. Ladies, but because your identity has been tampered with, you believe that you ought to shrink down and not be yourself. The data says that women, when they apply uh, for a job, want to make sure that they have 100% of the requirements, yet a man will apply for the same position with less than 60%. And when they hire you, you don't even negotiate your salary because you feel blessed just to get the job. Girl. Wait, 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 wait. Have, have you ever heard someone say, I don't like her. She makes me sick. I, well, why don't you like, I don't know. I just don't like her. 
Let me give you some data on that too. The study said that gender, gender stereotypes are that women are to be kind, nurturing, supportive, and helpful. But men are to be decisive, competitive, aggressive, and strong. The problem is that the power brokers and the influencers and the power leaders have to be what society ascribes to men. To be a leader and a successful female leader, you have to go against what society says is a likable woman. Oh, girl. But do you know who you are? Just in case, let me share it with you. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are more than a conqueror. That actually literally means that you are completely victorious. Girl, believe more, hope more, desire more. That's not Delulu. That's not manifesting. That's the word of God that says, as a woman thinketh, so is she. Who are you? Who tampered with your identity? Who changed who you are? Who messed with you? Don't you know that those scriptures uh, that we use are not just applicable to the boys? Uh, that they are applicable to you? Uh, that God wants you to be strong and mighty. April Mason says it like this. The life you want is on the other side of your identity switch. America Ferreira says that identity is your superpower. Hey girl, do you know who you are and whose you are? Uh, let me give you some PowerPoints to help you find your superpower. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, let me share with you that when you are empowered by God, male or female, you are empowered in him, through him, and for him. In him, through him, and for him. That your identity is found in him. And that power is transferred through you. And that God will then empower you to bring him glory in him, through him, for him. In the first three chapters of Ephesians, Paul gives sound doctrine. He gives instructions. He gives principles on their Christian walk. And then he prays for them. And he says, I, I want, I, I pray that God will uh, bless you and strengthen you in his Holy Spirit. That he will give you glorious inner strength. That he would give you extravagant dimensions in Christ's love. The NIV says, being rooted and established in love, you may have power. When he finished praying, he goes into our text, which is a doxology. A doxology is a moment to praise God. It is spoken glory. It is audible praise. Here, what, here uh, Paul takes a moment to give God praise. This was not unusual in the Jewish custom. That this wasn't unusual. Huh? They would go in the synagogue, they would teach, and then they would do a doxology that signaled they were moving on to the next thing. Uh, and so Paul does the same thing in his writing. If you will, we might call it today a praise break. So for three chapters, he's talking about Jesus and his abundance. Then he prays, he tells them what he's praying for, and then he breaks out in a praise break. That mirrors us sometimes today in what we go through. Uh, that sometimes God will allow trials and tribulations, ups and downs to infect our lives. But then once we get it, 
He uh, uh, leads us into a praise break. I believe the baby boomers got it right when they said, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. For three chapters, Paul is teaching about the abundance and the availability that we have in Christ Jesus. And then he goes there but you can't go there and not go to praise there is no way you can teach about Jesus and talk about Jesus and not somehow end up in praise uh, maybe 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 uh, you've been in that space in your life uh, that the lesson has been hard and you should have been dead you should have been humiliated you should have lost your mind you should have been out for the count but now it's time for a praise break Woo. you can't reflect on his teaching and on his goodness and not break out in praise you need a moment of doxology where you give God audible praise we had a training in Atlanta and what started out as a training ended up in deliverance and people were praising and shouting and this young woman walked up to me and she was holding her fist out like this and she said Dr. Sears I praised off my lashes I said girl glue them off later but go on and praise God while you can oh magnify the Lord with me Ah, let us exalt his name together. Woo! I'm talking about the kind of praise uh, that will make your waterproof mascara run off. Uh, that'll make your studio fix melt away. Uh, that will make you forget that your little toe hurt in them shoes. Uh, I'm talking about the kind of praise uh, that will make you forget that the person next to you uh, don't act like they like Jesus. Uh, but because he's been good to you uh, and better to you than you've been to yourself. Uh, you can't sit in the sanctuary without giving him glory. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hey, I got to get back to preaching. But for me, he's been so good. He's been gone from everlasting to everlasting. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He has been good and is worthy. Woo. For yesterday, for today, for tomorrow, for life, for health, for strength, for the mental capacity to praise you, to walk in and out your courts, because you first loved me, I bless your name. For every open door, for every promotion, I know I'm not in here by myself hey girl praise him with me shout with me he's been good hey there ain't no way Woo. that you went through two days of teaching preaching and empowerment and you don't have a praise this morning ain't no way For clothes, for a house, for shoes on my feet. I passed by a homeless man this week. There's no way you can see those things and not reflect on how good he has been to you. Woo. Now, 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 now we can understand where Paul is in these two verses. We can imagine why he breaks out into now unto him. 
now unto him, 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 him. Mm. Sustainer of life, redeemer, him. And in case you didn't get it in three chapters, Paul gives another identifier. Now unto him who is able. Oh Lord, help me. Who oh, help me teach? Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask. This is the part to get me. Or think. Have, have you ever did that moment where you start daydreaming about what you want in life? And oh God, I want this and I, I want that and I. I need you to do this, and I, and Lord, I love to serve you in this way, and I, I, I appreciate it, Lord, if you did. He said, you can't even imagine. <laughs> Paul shows a powerful identifier because many of us have suffered from identity theft. And the enemy uh, is, uh, he has perfected how to get you without getting you. Because if he can make you believe you are not who God says you are, he really don't have to bother you. You'll destroy yourself. You'll mess up yourself. If you don't believe that you can get the loan, you'll never fill the paperwork out. If you don't believe you can get the job, you'll never apply. But you have to be in a place that you know who you are. <laughs> that your identity is in Christ Jesus. Oh, he's been slippery for a long time. He did it to Jesus. Jesus goes into the wilderness for 40 days and for 40 nights, and he tempts him with identity. You, God, turn this stone to bread. Uh, you, you who? Well, jump off and let the angels come, come get you. You, you want to be? Okay. Well, worship me and I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you all of this. It was about identity. He, he was, he was using identity against Jesus, but Jesus knew the word and he was not just man. He was God as well. And so he knew how to fight and women, let me encourage you. You got to know the word for yourself. You got to know it for yourself. It ain't about what mama and them said, grandmama and them said. It don't, I, I appreciate that they deposited some things in me, but when I get in the sticky situations, I need to know for myself. He's still using those tactics today. 75% of women suffer from imposter syndrome that you don't believe you should be at the table that you are worthy to be at the table that you don't believe that you are who God says you are that when you get in the situations and they snicker behind your back that you shrink and you diminish but you gotta be careful because God has made you fearfully and wonderfully and to be anything but what God created is against the will of God girl sit at the table not on the side of the table God says that he would prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy you got the table and you over here Sit. Oh, girl, sit at the table. 
Women deal with fear, brothers. I, I don't know if you know, but we, we, we deal with stuff and, and, and we go through some things. We, we sometimes, uh, women are afraid to speak up in a meeting because they say you talk too much. Now, 95% of the conversation have been men, but as soon as you say so. Okay, uh, okay. Okay. Hmm. I, I, I know one, and, and, and this is not exclusive to women, amen, but if you have a good idea, it's not good enough at that moment until a man bring it up later, and it's the best thing since sliced bread. Ooh. I have counseled women over 20 years, and the story remains the same. They don't feel good enough. They don't feel worthy. Ah, I'm changing that today. Your identity is in Christ Jesus. The, the power of who you are and what you can do is in Christ Jesus. You must find your value and your worth in him. That is the theme for this weekend. I am his. Oh, say it with me, girls. I am his. Brothers, help us out. I am his. If you are Jesus, you belong to him. Well, let, let's say, who is he then? He's a way maker. He's the king of king. He's the Lord of lords. He's a miracle worker. He's a redeemer. So if he's a redeemer, that makes me redeemed. And if he's a sustainer, that makes me sustained. And if he's a deliverer, that makes me delivered. Come on, declare it in the house. I am his. Oh, girl, say it like you mean it. I am his. Down unto him. I belong to him. And there is power in my identity because I am his. It means that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. If I am his, that means that he really will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. That really means that I can speak those things that are not as though there were. That means that my identity is found in Jesus Christ. And I love every minute of it. Now unto him who is able. My favorite smoking Norfolk song. No, I can't even say that. I got a lot. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know this, but uh, I, I used to listen to him on the road. My church was about two hours away, one direction. And I would listen and I would worship with him. So it's still kind of a little weird sometimes that the person I worship with in the car on the radio and stuff is right there in my face sometimes. That's still weird to me. Sounding just like the track. Just it sound. Ain't no Millie Vanilli there. That's his real voice. It's amazing. So let me change that. One of my favorite songs. Uh, he, he, all of a sudden, the silence, the music hasn't started yet, and the silence is broken with this phrase, God is able. He doesn't just say it one time, and the music didn't start yet. God is able. God is able. God is able, and he won't fail. Don't you know that you can walk in any room, in any atmosphere and change it? Everything you are and everything you hope to be is found in Christ Jesus. Imposter syndrome only works if you think it's about you, girl. It ain't about you. It's about the Lord and his assignment on your life. He'll make a way out of no way if you get out of his way. How many people in this place have found their identity in Christ Jesus? Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think in him. 
is where you find your empowerment. Your identity is in him. Okay, preacher. I got that much. Uh, but we got to recognize that in him, he is the source of power, but that power is then transferred to us through him. Power is the rate at which energy is transferred. The power transfer for the empowerment of believers, we see still in verse 20. According to his power at work within us. John uh, says it like this. Greater is he in me than he who's in the world. That divine empowerment is the source of our victory. It is not our own strength, but his mighty power at work within us. Because you are his and your identity is in him, then you are transferred power from him to you. That the transfer of power is what transforms you. The woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment and Jesus says, I felt the virtue go out of me. I, I felt the transfer of power. But when we look at the Samaritan woman, she experienced a transfer when Jesus told her about the living water at the well. And Mary Magdalene was delivered from seven demons and became Jesus' most devoted follower and the first one to see him after the resurrection. There was a transfer of power with the of forgiveness with the woman caught in adultery. The transfer Transformation of power is still at work today. Listen to the scripture. And it's a sign to the children of God. Ask, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's not just for the brothers. That's not even just you two. That's you. All of us, the sons and the children of God, are equipped with this transfer of power. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost fell on all flesh. All, did it say all? All flesh. Now watch this. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit paraclete. Uh, that word found in John 14 and 16, 15, 26, and 16 and 7 is referring to the Holy Spirit. And it was used in Greek times to describe a soldier that fought alongside of you. The word actually means that you, the one that fights alongside of another. It, it means that um, when you're fighting, you're not alone that he works through you that when you get up in the morning and you gotta fight depression and fear when you get up in the morning and you gotta fight crazies and overcome things in your own mind when you gotta deal with attack after attack and you don't know why or where it's coming from that means that you are empowered through him that the Holy Ghost works through you in those times, imagine if you will, I, I, I'm gonna be the soldier. No, 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 no. Uh, this, 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 this you. Uh, I'm gonna be the paraclete. And the paraclete job is to fight with you. Fight. It's to fight. It's to fight. In other words, he fights what you can't see. He deals with the things you don't even know how to deal with. Ah, oh, there's been a transfer. When I was in college, I would call my daddy and say, Daddy, I need some money. And he wouldn't complain. He would just make the transfer. But how much more does our heavenly father love us? But wait, wait, wait. Once I got it and once I was empowered, I had to do something with it. That God is not just empowering you for you to sit and do nothing. Lord, I 
need to get rid of this doubt. There's a transfer. Come unto me, all you who are labored and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Lord, I can't. And God says, you can. And repeat after me, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Lord, I need. And he says, I've given you authority to trample on snakes, scorpions, and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Is there anybody in here that can identify a transfer in your life that God has not given you the spirit of fear but a power love and a sound mind there has been a power transfer because you accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life you become a Christian and with that title with that identity you are transferred the power of the Holy Holy Ghost. The Bible says that at your believing, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody fool you. You got the Holy Ghost if you don't have a shout. You got the Holy Ghost if you don't have the scream. Everybody is different and everybody doesn't have to be the same. Those aren't chills you feeling. That's Holy Ghost power. Those are tears out of nowhere. That's Holy Ghost power. A transfer is happening. He's in the atmosphere. And if you open your heart, if you open your mind, you'll feel God moving. Can you feel him? Can you feel God moving? In him through him for him oh you bless me you have power at work in you now not to him who is able in him according to the power at work in us through him that power is transferred. Ask me why. Verse 21 tells us, to him be glory. The NIV says, in the church and in Christ Jesus for all the generations. Don't get it twisted. You got empowered and you got the power so that you can bring glory to the name of God. So that you can bring glory to God in his church. You are empowered Jesus says in John that you shall do greater work than, than he did. Girl you better work. You are empowered to do more you are empowered to live a life that reflects the father you are better than you think you are you've overcome those trials so that you can tell your testimony for the word of God says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony girl you ought to write that book start that business start that life group and here I'm about to mess some of y'all up right now you ought to volunteer here. Come on and jump into victory. You are empowered to be a blessing. When was the last time you volunteered? I, 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 I know that first time somebody says volunteer, everybody wants to run to the youth. I appreciate that. The scripture says all generations. But look around you right here. Look at all these generations right here. Come on, look, look at it. Look, 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 look. All of these women that need you, that need you just to pause a minute. Now, I know what you're saying in your heart. Well, how do I volunteer? How do I jump in? How do I become an ambassador? It's on the countdown. It's in the email. It's on every smiling face. It's on the website. It's on the app. You can just jump in the victory anytime you want. Now, I know y'all are watching online and y'all are saying, well, that's for people that are in the physical church. No, girl, we got room for you, global family. Jump in, 
come on and jump in the victory you are empowered by God to bring him glory it ain't just for you to manifest in the get rich and and do your thing you gotta trust and believe that god's assignment on your life god's calling on your life is more than just for you or even the people that are immediately around you that god wants you to do more and abundantly he wants you to do more than what you can ask or think that god is able to get you there and when you have done the will of god and when you are empowered uh, that we can say to God be the glory uh, for the things uh, that he has done Uh, go ahead and mentor Uh, go ahead and empower your co-worker Uh, go ahead and empower your sister Uh, you are blessed uh, to be a blessing all of it is to bring God glory Uh, glory to God in the highest Uh, who is the king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory david and stephen called him the god of glory james says he's the lord of glory and i just want to bless him for being my everything and my all in all come on and help me give god glory open up your mouth and thank him for how good he's been in your life for making a way out of no way come on don't you go back with that glory hey. there's a song that we sing in the south and i believe y'all singing up here too it just simply says to god be the glory to god be the glory for the things for the things he's done for the transfer of power for the working of the saints ha hallelujah yay thank you lord to god be the
to Chicago. She said, we can't get you there until Monday morning. That ain't gonna work. Well, ma'am, you know, this is, I know. But I know the assignment. I know what he empowered me with. I gotta get there. I said, Craig, we gotta get there. We gotta get there. We gotta get there. He said, babe, let's drive. So, all right, all right, all right, let's drive, we're driving, we're driving, we're going to go, okay, hallelujah. 1816 dollars for a one-way vehicle. When your identity is in Christ Jesus, when a transfer of power has happened, you can't keep it to yourself. You'll put your own money in it. You, anybody? You must first find out who you are to know who you are. I am here. 